So today we're working on a Honda CRV, and this particular CRV, uh, we had an issue with a misfire code and it running rough. And uh, the misfire code said it was on cylinder number four. So I did a compression test because the customer already had somebody do a tune-up and a timing belt and all of this work at the dealership and elsewhere. And uh, as it turns out, it got worse instead of better, according to the customer. And so sometimes I wonder, is you doubt, you know, because maybe you don't notice or pay as much attention until things are bad, and then you're really, really, you know, uh, paying attention. But anyway, if you look here, you can see um, I did a compression test, and I had 140 on the first three holes. This is cylinder number one, close by the belts. And on cylinder four, I only had 60 PSI. And so what I did is I used a paint pen and marked 60 PSI, and then I hooked up my compression tester to uh, supply air from the air compressor, and I had a leak when cylinder four was closed. I had a leak out the intake, which is backwards. Normally it goes out the exhaust. See the exhaust manifold here? Normally when you have a leak, the valves will burn out or run out of adjustment on these, and it'll go through the exhaust, but with this one it's going out through the intake, so that right there was kind of a weird thing. So as I remove the valve cover and you look at the timing belt, we went to line up the timing belt for TDC. As you come around to this side, um, you can see the timing mark right here. You have a cast mark here and then also on the cam. You can see that there's a straight line across the cam here and there. And then when you look at this one, you can see this mark here is not in alignment here. You're off a tooth on this one cam and so that can cause a problem. I was all ready to pull out the head. I had a down payment on doing a cylinder head job and we may still have to. According to the dealership there's no more adjustment that can be made on these but as I look at it I can see that there is more adjustment. They were feeding her a story. So anyway we're going to go ahead and do the timing belt. Now what can cause you to be off a tooth? Well there's a couple of things. If your tensioner is bad you can jump a tooth and that's common. These cams are actually really high torque as I tried to manipulate these to be on top dead center by the cam. It was almost impossible. I had to do it by the crank. Um, but anyway, uh, the situation is, is we're going to go ahead and go through and check the timing belt. Um, I think they may have installed it incorrectly so that they had some slack on the tension side. So we'll tear it down and go from there. So as we go to the wheel well and look inside where the timing cover was, you can see that the tensioner is set with a spring right here, but it's tightened by a bolt. So this wasn't a matter of a hydraulic tensioner failure. This is a matter of having slack on the tension side. You can see the belt routing, um, how the belt is taut here, and it goes around the crank. It's got a really good wrap on it. There's a lot of torque on this, and then it comes up over the tensioner. So this should have been very tight, and then this should have been, and you can rotate. You can have this rotated um, clockwise, put the belt on it, rotate it back counterclockwise to get that tension, um, because you don't want to have to put the teeth on under great tension, so you wrap it by turning either a cam wheel at the top, um, clockwise as this case would be, or this one counterclockwise to bring the tension to where it's all on the tensioner side. And then once you have all the tension there, uh, then you want to bring it up and tighten it. So I did get the water pump replaced. Um, the reason being, when you look at the pump, it's got that little drain thing that I always talk about to let the antifreeze come out before it becomes a problem. And uh, as you can see, it's just full of crust where it had been leaking. So I got that replaced. And then as I got looking at it, this is the one that was off before. Uh, it was out of alignment with the, you can see how it's a little bit to the left. And you look at that little square down here and compare it with this. And as I take the wrench and uh, influence that to line up, I can line it up so that it's just right straight with it. And as soon as I let off the wrench, watch what happens to that cam wheel. So that's probably what happened is the technician that did the timing belt they just had it relaxed and didn't double check the timing marks and that's how it came to have that problem. Alright, so I've got the new water pump in there. You can see that shiny metal down in there. And I've got the timing belt back on. And what's convenient about this is remember how spring loaded that was? You can actually pin the cams down if you have a little uh, Craftsman Phillips screwdriver, small size, and a drill bit.
you see the little holes and you just line them up and pin them and that's really nice and then of course I use my paper clips uh, you know my uh, sheet metal paper clips for stacks of paper and I clip it to the cam wheel itself too so when you look at this you can see that the alignment marks are on when you look here you can see let's see where we at you can see right here these line up with the little lines back there and then of course the holes pin it just right on um, so you got here and then also the holes underneath of there you see that little bar in the cam wheel and this bar here so my exhaust and my intake cam on this dual overhead cam engine are all lined up so now we'll go underneath and look at the crank when we look at the crank as I snag my creeper do you ever wonder why I snag or move the camera so much that's half of it right there so there's this little arrowhead right there if you look close you can see it so that arrowhead aligns with this little bar but as you can see they don't necessarily align very well let's see if I can get out and create some shadow see that you can see the little arrowhead, you can see the little line and the little lines a little bit counterclockwise and that happens and so of course naturally I think man that technician that did that timing belt wrong probably gave him the wrong year and just wasn't a man of detail uh, so I checked with Napa and sure enough the number they give me for this year make a modem it was a 250184 so we're good the way you load this timing belt is you load it on the cams first and clip them on and then pull all the slack out on the front side of the vehicle and all that slack um, goes out to the bottom to your crankshaft pulley. There we go. So the front part of it should be taut like instruction. So anyway you turn this slightly clockwise, load the belt onto it and then go back counterclockwise until your mark is whatever it's going to be and then what I like to do is I like to take a screwdriver and stick the screwdriver in here and the handle of the screwdriver works as a ballast to kind of hold it and what that does is it holds the timing belt on down here um, the next thing you want to do is just keep going uh, go ahead and put it around your tensioner I'll have my tensioner with the spring disconnected and I'll have it in the down position and tightened so it stays down to the right to give it as much room as possible and then you put the water pump on last if you use a screwdriver or a drill bit to bind the cam at the top in that little hole then it'll be a lot easier otherwise you got to pull down on the belt to get the cam to rotate clockwise to give you enough slack to put on this will barely go on once you get it on go ahead and put your spring back on uh, the spring that I'm talking about, see if I can get the flashlight in the same hand as the camera, is uh, the spring right here. So you'll loosen this, uh, hook up your spring, and then once it's hooked up, then I'll take a screwdriver, pry bar, or whatever, and you have to be gentle. So seriously, don't screw it up here. You can go in this little cavity here, and then pry just to take the slack out, just a little tug, tug, tug. You don't want to stretch a belt. You don't want to mess a belt up. The belt says on it, do not pry pulley, uh, you know, with the belt on. So, And then just release it um, after you've got all the slack pulled up into here. And then go ahead and torque this one down. It's a 14 millimeter. You can look at your buck for a spec. You just snug that down. Don't kill it. Don't strip it. Just snug it. So, isn't that a cute new little water pump in there? Of course you see my Telltale Permatex Right stuff sticking out, my cheap insurance to make sure I don't leak, and also to hold that little gasket ring, O-ring in place while I put it in. So that's how you line up your timing belt and load it on here. Um, the other tricky thing about this, uh, your, your little tensioner that you have for the, what was it, the power steering, it's this little guy right here and it's activated by that little arm and this little guy it sticks out you think that you want to loosen the pulley one that's not right you go on this one it's a 12 millimeter loosen it then there's another nut and you loosen the nut with a deep socket all the way back and then you get on the actual shaft of the bolt it's a little teeny seven millimeter and loosen that and then it'll loosen the belt and that belt's going to be stuck on your you guessed it motor mount see the belt hanging on the motor mount down there and that's the middle belt on the harmonic balancer 
So the deepest belt is your alternator and it's real easy. It's just that little uh, 12 millimeter thing at the top there. Let me put a laser on it. It's this wire harness behind the wire harness just below there. It's a 12 millimeter. You go down straight down to the other side of the alternator and then there's a 14 millimeter nut. You loosen those and it'll just come right loose. And then the last one that you have to worry about is the AC compressor and that one's not too bad. It's just a little tensioner down in the bottom. Um, it's pretty WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll go ahead and make sure that this was a fix and run it and film that and we'll be good. Ah! My head! <laughs> I've lost my head. Okay, so despite how I thought it was running awesome, I did a compression test and found that the compression was still about 60 which is not acceptable so as you look down here on the floor um, you see the valves they all look kind of okay except this one's a little more black than the other ones are and then upon further inspection you can see that there's a little part of it that's just missing altogether. as I hold the flashlight in there you can see that there's light coming in through there so I got a massive leak so it looks like we are in the market for some valves and a valve job after all Despite the timing belt being off and causing a massive leak into the intake, this was also leaking into the exhaust. So, cylinder four, we salute you. <laughs>